Patrick Carroll and I'm a painter, or I call myself a painter, and for most of my 40 odd years of painting professionally, I have probably questioned my worth uh, in every single work I've ever done. I, I've always said about this occupation that Ego and paranoia walk hand in hand, and as you seek the highest compliment from the highest authority, should you be lucky or unlucky enough to get it, you then question the authority of the person who gives you the compliment. But I think that is something that keeps you going. You keep looking for the next work, the next challenge, and it would be a terrible thing if you look back on 40 years of work and wished you could paint as well as you painted 40 years earlier. Um, having said that, there are some works that I would be quite happy if they were consumed by fire and yet the people who own them still love them. And I think we all experience this in terms of, let's say, an early photograph of ourselves that someone's got in their album and you haven't seen it for 30 odd years. It's total shock. Uh, and yet, a photograph you might have kept from the same era and have lived with and accepted doesn't hold the same shocking power. So in terms of earlier work, um, I just let them live and say, well, at least they got me started. And even what I'm doing today, if I live long enough, will be earlier work when I'm 102. So um, it's, it's an ongoing uh, metaphor for life, I suppose, that you grow as uh, an individual and you grow as a painter unless you don't attempt to typecast yourself or to formularize your own work. 
in the teaching I've done, I've often said to students that um, uh, there are no formulae and no shortcuts to this process. And I've got to remind myself of that every time I start a new work because sometimes the gods smile and the painting comes with relative ease. But more often than not, you're criticising yourself because you're the one who set the problems. You can't blame a single soul. So uh, that has helped in life terms as well. To, to do the art life thing across the board keeps you honest and consistent in both realms. And they do work side by side. who's been working professionally for about 40 years, come up with the strange compulsion to work through a, uh, a, a scientific accepted uh, fact about order versus disorder. And as Paul Simon once said, and I still like this definition of entropy, everything put together sooner or later falls apart. And I suppose painters are, any painter that sells a painting would like to think that the painting will last, at least for their lifetime, that you're not going to spend your later years apologetically repainting because you used poor product. So, um, the sense of, of entropy has always underpinned this occupation. And even, even though, in a sense, painting is the reverse, where you're making, hopefully, order from confusion, um, you, you certainly want to be able to identify your marks for you as the sole arbiter of the worth of your works uh, from the time you say painting finished. So, uh, but it goes further back with me. Uh, my mother was a painter and encouraged all of her kids to paint, but I was the only one that took the bait. And I became passionate about painting from a very early age. So, uh, in that regard, uh, even though I had started collecting items from the road and from the footpath, um, there was a joint interest in entropy even way back then. Because as a hobby, the only criterion I had was that the, the things I picked up had been either damaged or aged or rusted into some sort of disorder, even though I could see what they were. Example, a rusted bottle top could be a miniature portrait of an aged face with the right or the wrong state of mind. And it's that objective view of things is part of the painting process to, uh, to stand back so that you can really see the difference between the wood and the trees, to come at a, uh, an ordinary subject in an extraordinary fashion is part of the process. Uh, a lot of people have said to me, I don't know how you ever find the patience to paint. I don't see that there's any patience in it. I want the thing finished before I've begun. Uh, but it never happens, although the journey that the painting takes you on is uh, all involving and you, you no longer sense time passing uh, when you're engrossed in solving your own, the problem you created for yourself. 
So as time went on and painting consumed me, um, over the last 10 years, um, the need to pursue the hobby again popped its head up and I found myself back to collecting items in decay from the road or op shops or anywhere at all. And, and once again, it revitalised um, any trip I'd take because there might be a bit of metal in it or a bit of something else. So as my collection grew, I'd reached the point where I really was losing so much space that I wouldn't have had time to work. So hence, I started to gather the sculptures together as I simultaneously started to photograph roadside chuckouts as opposed to taking from them. Hence, I moved to uh, uh, putting a proposal to uh, Tim Braham of the Gosford Regional Art Gallery. The idea of the painter slash sculptor slash photographer as uh, responding to that that sort of underpins everything. I think Paul McCartney, simpler, not Paul McCartney, uh, Paul Simon simplified it beautifully with the words in one of his songs that said everything put together sooner or later falls apart. Um, another simple description of entropy is uh, disorder, uh, where an ordered item falls into disorder. So um, I, I embrace the theme and the challenge that it's presented.